Welcome everybody to my podcast, Big Little Small Talk. I'm Megan O'Hara Sullivan and I love to talk, but I also love to listen. If you're new here, welcome. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome along listeners to our segment called Big Little Small Talk. And today I'm here interviewing a woman who is 100 years old. She's been alive for 100 years and her name is Daisy McPaul. She was born on the 1st of February, 1922. So that makes you 100. How do you feel at 100, Daisy? Well, it's just, I think God has granted me my 100 years. I don't know why. But he just has. Somehow or other you managed to make it through to 100 years old. I can't imagine some of the changes that you've seen in your life in 100 years. Yes, there has been refrigeration and transportation and lots of different things. I often think even the sort of the way that we use our money, you know, that you can go to a hole in the wall and get money out of it, whereas, you know, in the old days you just carried your money around in your in your wallet, didn't you? Yes, you could. Yeah. And you could go shopping and just carry a basket on your arm and go and get a half a pound of tea and maybe a bit of sugar and carry it home. Yes, that's right, and that's all you needed. So, Daisy, let's go back, right back to the beginning. You were born in a house in Wollongarra, is that right? Well, born uh, with my two sisters on Mongula Station. Um, that was owned by my grandfather and my father. They were both graziers, and uh, my two sisters and I were born there. And we went to school at either Wollongarra or Tenterfield. How did you get to school, Daisy? We walked. And how far would that have been? I wouldn't have a clue, <laughs> but it was probably a quarter of a mile. Okay. And were your sisters, were your two sisters, were they older or younger than you? Where did you come in the family? My two sisters were older. And then when my mother got diphtheria, because she came out from England and diphtheria was raging in Australia. And I went to school with my two oldest sisters when I was about four and a half or under five. And um, I used to sit at the back of the class and look through these big books. They must have been an encyclopedia with all the pretty pictures in. So you went to school so that your mother could rest, was that right? Because my mother was in hospital and she was very sick and that. Mm -hmm. And you, you sort of, it was a form of babysitting in a way, was it, of you going to school? It was something for you to do, to go to school rather than... Oh, yes. Um, yeah. yes. And what about your father? What sort of work was he doing in Wollongarra? Well, he was crazy and then when the, the cattle were lean or something rather, he used to go away shearing and he'd be away for quite a while and he couldn't look after three girls and for some time we were put in a hotel and they didn't look after us. What age would you have been? What age were you then, Daisy, when you were in the hotel? Oh, must have been about uh, five or six. Mm -hmm. And who was, who was in charge of looking after you? Was it your older sisters, was it? Well, after that, these hotel people were supposed to look after us. But one time my father came home unexpectedly and he saw us. We'd walk from the hotel, two little girls, my sister who was uh, about three years older than me, and we walked up to his place and we raided his meat safe with them. Um, cheese and a bit of stale bread and he came up and copped us. <laughs> were, were, you, were you in trouble for that? No, he just said, what am I paying those hotel people to look after you and feed you? And he went down and had a, a row with them 
And then we went to Brisbane for uh, six months or so till my mother got better. And were you able to visit your mother in hospital? Do you have any memories of that? No, but I know the doctor used to come and swab our throats with kerosene. And if there was no kerosene there, he'd take it out of the kerosene lanterns. So the kerosene was designed to kill all the germs, was it? Yes, from diphtheria. Oh, my gosh, that must be a fairly harsh treatment. Do you smell kerosene now and it takes you back to that time? If you ever smell kerosene? Oh, oh well, I knew it was in the lantern and they used to, the doctor used to come with a swab and swab our throats. Right. And where you were living at Wollongarra, your dad's house, was it sort of a... Um, a luxurious house? Did you have a lot of furniture or I did hear... No, a... it was a three-bedroom place and it was only partly finished because my father and the constable and the minister was building it and I think they used to forget and go on a rampage. A, a, a <laughs> drinking rampage, was it? Oh, yes, often they used to. Right. <laughs> And um, is it true that um, you didn't have cupboards, you just had sticks to hold your clothes on, is that correct? You hung your clothes up on sticks? Oh, we used to hang our clothes in the corner of a room and everybody was poor with the depression and that and we used to put a piece of wire or a stick across the corner of a bedroom and hang our clothes on, well, wood, and tie them onto the other piece and hang our clothes. We didn't have very many clothes, Mm -hmm. maybe one or two dresses. Did you have more than one pair of shoes? We had a pair of sand shoes for school and day wear and a pair of good ones. And when the sand shoes... We used to scrub them every weekend and paint them up with this white mixture. And if there was a hole in them, we'd shove a bit of cardboard in it. And if that wore out, we'd shove a bit more in. Mm -hmm. And um, everybody was in the same boat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you you loved um, things like crabbing on the weekend. Were you able to go crabbing somewhere where you lived? Oh, yes, down in the Condamine River under the bridge and go yabbying with a piece of raw meat and a bit of string. Was that mostly for food or was that for fun or both? For both. Mm -hmm. And we used to have a little fire going and a billy can of boiling water. And if we caught a big one, we'd drop it straight in. And, And eat it straight away. This oh, is you. Yes. This is you and your sisters. Was there any other people no, coming into was, your family? No, it's not my two sisters because they were older, and uh, one went out to work, and the other one uh, went to another aunt, and I was there, and my mother was out of hospital for a short time, and that, and that was uh, school friends and and that we used to go yabbying and we'd go and get a billy can and we'd go down the toll bar road and get a billy can full of blackberries and bring them home. And my mother used to cook them. And when my father was home, we used to, um, he used to shoot rabbits and hares and we even had uh, kangaroo tail soup. Mm. Very, very good, I hear, the kangaroo towel soup. Yeah. But you loved, um, you loved school and you got to go to school and you loved reading. What did you love about school? Oh, well, there was something to do, I suppose. And, and you learned. And it carried on for the rest of your life. How, how old were you when you, were le- when you left school, Daisy? I was a week before my 14th birthday. Mm-hmm. And, and what did you do then? Did you go to work? Was that what, ha- what happened at 14? Yes. I went to Nurse O'Connor's first step was a, a, a place in Hume Street. 
had your parents moved to Toowoomba by then? Oh, my father was uh, away and my mother was in Toowoomba and that, yes. So tell me a little bit more about starting work. What were you doing when you were, you were nursing? I used to have to sweep the floors and uh, dust around the place and take them their medicine and that. Mm-hmm. Was there a particularly sad story, Daisy, about one time someone asked you to hold a baby? Can you remember that story? No, they asked me to wheel this cot, wheel it backwards and forwards, and I wondered why. And then they, Nurse O'Connor said, oh, she can, you can stop now, the baby's dead. And uh, I got a bit of a shock then, yes. Yeah. Were you working as a midwife in that job? Were you helping women deliver babies? I can't remember too much about the babies, Mm -hmm. but um, they used to go there and uh, and that was it. Mm -hmm. So you were living in Toowoomba. Were you living in Gentle Street, I believe, is that right? Yes, yes. And while you were living in Gentle Street, there was someone else who, another family who were living on the corner. Who were they? They were the McPauls. Okay, so what was, how was fate sealed with the McPaul family? Did you spend a lot of time together, your family? Yes, yeah. because they, they had older brothers, about 16 or 17, and they used to buy comics. Well, we couldn't afford comics, and they used to come and let me read them, and we'd sit on the brand and read all these comics. And they were nice boys. Mm-hmm. How many were there of those boys? Oh. Was there 10 or 11 of them? No, there was a lot of girls and boys. I think there was uh, the uh, Clyde, Broly, Keith, Eric. I think there was about five boys and six girls. Mm-hmm. And did you form a friendship with any of the McPauls that may have carried on throughout your life? Well, my sister married one of the older boys. Mm -hmm. So you were living there, you were working. And what happened at 18, Daisy? What did you do when you were 18? Well, I went with, I went out west before I was 18 and, uh, I used to be um, help mother six months at one station and six months at another one and look after if the mothers went into hospital to have a baby. I looked after the other children that were there and I was there until um, I went to Brisbane with a girlfriend, yes. Mm-hmm. And what did you decide? This was all sort of the war was raging at this time, World War Two, was it? And did you decide that you were going to join up? Is that what happened? No. My mother came one day and she said, there's a letter here for you. And I said, oh. And I opened it and it said, you either join one of the, the Army, Navy or Air Force or go into a factory. I was quite surprised because I was working. And so what did you do? You you joined up? I joined up. But first of all, I got a job in Brisbane at Archerfield Aerodrome and used to watch the big Douglas airliners come in with all their lights on. So I'll just remind the listeners, Daisy, that they're on 102.7 FM and we're in our segment called Big Little Small Talk and I'm talking to Daisy McPaul who celebrated her 100th birthday on the 1st of February 1922 you were born, Daisy, and that makes you 100 and one month old, which is quite an achievement. <laughs> and we're up to the stage in Daisy's life where you're in the army in World War Two between about 1943 and 1946, is that correct? Yes. Yeah? What yes. sort of work were you doing there, Daisy? Well, 
everybody wanted to be a driver because they saw a picture of Elizabeth II. I think she was looking at a tyre. I don't think she was changing it or anything. And everybody put in to be a driver like her. That is the late Queen now, the mm. second. And um, anyway, they had so many drivers that they didn't know what to do. So when you had to do this aptitude test for drivers, this wheel went this way, that one went anti-clock, and that one went something else. And that my mind was full of all these springs, and I, I thought, no. But you had to draw every part, the crankshaft and every part of the engine. And anyway, I was good, but I wasn't perfect. And then they had enough drivers, so they gave me another aptitude test of um, spelling, arithmetic and everything. And I passed that uh, excellent, 100%. And they said, you'll be more suited for clerical work. And so that's why I went in for clerical work. And tell me about that time when you were in the army. Did you love it? Did you love the freedom of being a young woman and you had your own money and, you know? Yes. Yes, it was good. Uh huh. Yes. I wanted to ask you, Daisy, how I came to interview you was because you're a member of the Harlexton sub-branch of the RSL and I wanted to ask you about you, you were either given or... Um, I'm just not sure, a Japanese flag from an American and you gave it to the RSL. Can you tell me that story? Uh, yes. There was some chap, he was an American uh, sailor and he used to go out in submarines. One time we met, oh, I've forgotten how, and he said, will you come and have a coffee with me? And I said, OK. And he said, I'm going up to the islands and I knew the Japanese were up there, and he said, I'll bring you back some souvenirs. And he brought back the Japanese flag and uh, some invasion money. And what's, what's invasion money? Tell me about that. What does that mean? That was what the Japanese flew over Darwin when they bombed it and threw the Japanese government $2 invasion money. But then we, I gave it to the RSL that was in Ruthven Street at the corner and it was uh, thriving at that time and somebody broke in and pinched it all. Right. And was it ever recovered, Daisy? No. I've got the Japanese flag back. We traced that to somebody up the range and I got that back. Oh, that's, a, that's an amazing story. I think you'll be interested to know I've been at the Rose Garden this morning in a memorial to the war animals lost during... There's a tributary there for animals that were lost during the war. Oh, yes. So it's pur Purple Poppy Day today. Is it? Yeah. So I thought that that would be an interesting story for you. Okay, so what about um, when the war was declared over? What, what did you do? Did you go into Queen Street like everyone else in Brisbane? Well, my girlfriend and I, um, we've got a photo somewhere, and uh, we were on leave and we knew that it was coming to an end, but we didn't know when. And that was, I think, about August the 15th, 1945. And we were just walking along, my girlfriend and I, and then all of a sudden somebody come out one of the shops and handed us a great big bunch of bougainvillea and said, the war's over, the war's over. And everybody uh, sang out, the war's over, the war's over. And people rushed out in the street, Yanks and Aussies and civilians, and they separated us. And um, we all joined and we was singing and dancing down the street. I can't imagine the feeling of elation 
was it just incredible to hear? And did you believe it? You believed that the war was over. There wasn't any doubt? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And is that one of those famous pictures that they had um, on the front page of the Courier Mail? They had pictures sort of de- of the people in Queen Street. Yes, yes. So you were one of those people? Yes. Oh, I'd love to see that sometime. That That's amazing. <laughs> yes, I've got it. Um, we'll have a look for it later. So yeah. after the war then, Daisy, what did you do? Did you go <laughs> further afield then from Australia? Well... Did you go to London, perhaps? I went to England. My aunt was over there and my mother wanted to go to England because her father, I think, was sick. So we went to England and that was it. I stayed there for seven years. What type of work were you doing? Were you working, Daisy, when you were in London? Yes, I was working at Jay's furnishing place. It was a place like Rose where people used to come in and pay a deposit on furniture. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you were you were happy living in London? No, I didn't like England at all. <laughs> what was it? Too cold, too wet? So it was too cold. Yes. Mm-hmm. So you were there and somehow or other you went to see a clairvoyant. Can you tell me about that when you went and saw the clairvoyant? To see the... The clairvoyant or the fortune oh, teller. Oh, yes. She said, um, well, I didn't believe because during the war you'd go in, in Australia, you'd have a cup of coffee and they'd say, read your cup and they'd say, oh, you're going to get a present and you're, you're going to do this and you're going to do that. Well, that was evident because the Yanks used to hand out nylon stockings and chocolates and cigarettes and, and everything. And so I went to see this uh, one. She lived down in the, under the ground, like they have the terraced houses in London, and it was a coal cellar but she had it converted into a a bedroom, kitchen. And, um, yes, she said, do you want tea, your palm, or um, cards? And I said, oh, I didn't feel like tea. And I said, cards. And she went like this. And uh, then she told me where I'd come from. And that, and she said, you're going to go back overseas and you'll never return again to England. And she read things that, I don't know how she knew, but she was really good. Mm -hmm. What sort of things did she predict? Was there an ace of spades? What, what, What was that supposed to mean, the ace of spades? Oh, the death card. Yes. Yes, she said. There's um, going to be um, a death, but she said it won't affect you too much. And but she said because you're away from them, and my father died while I was over there. Hmm, that was very sad. So you decided to um, what else? I'll oh, just stay on the the um the fortune teller for a minute. What else did she predict? Did she predict anything about getting married or oh, having I a don't family? Know now. She probably predicted a lot of things, but I've forgotten them. Uh-huh. So you came back to Australia. You went back to the house at Gentle Street, did you? Um, no. Well, what I'm getting at, Daisy, is those McPauls who used to live on the corner, they started, some of them started to come back into your life and one of them particularly caught your eye, one who was 11 years younger. Can you tell me about him? Oh, well, I didn't meet him till he was 23 and I was 33. Yes. And we just clicked and had a lot of fun together and that, that's all. Mm-hmm. And did you get married to this Mick Paul? Yes. Yes. Are you still married to this Mick Paul? 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so that means some of your older sisters had got married to some of these McPauls, is that? And you got married as well? Yes. Yes. And my sister got married to my husband's older brother. Mm. Right. Well, just as well, that didn't turn nasty and you all stayed good friends, I gather. So you went on to have five children of your own? Yes. Yeah. And were you, um, were you working while you were having the kids, Daisy? Were you...? Yes, we were at a... Um, we went out west. We were at a Bullock Creek. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that was hard work but good fun, I imagine? Well, it, um, there was a lot of snakes out there and it was legal to kill them then. <laughs> Did you do the shooting of the snakes? Oh, I kill them with, the, with the, my point two two, and uh, with a shovel and that, yes. Mm-hmm. Tell me about the time that it rained fish when you were out west. Oh, yes. Yes, it did. And um, it, we had a real heavy downpour and um, it rained fish and frogs, little green frogs and little fish. And we went out and scooped them up out of the, the tracks where the, the tractors and our car used to go into town and put them in the dam that was close by. Mm -hmm. Do you know why it was raining fish? What was the reason? No, but one other time I read in the paper where a woman from down the coastal way, she said nobody would believe her when she said it rained fish and frogs. And I said, I did because I've seen it. And we've scooped them up and put them in the dam. <laughs> yes. So you came back to Brisbane, uh, came back to Toowoomba rather, and you bought a house in Charlotte Street. Yep. And well, first off, we bought a, a house in Shield Street. It was a big um, Queenslander with three entrances. Yeah, but the kids kept getting sick. The rain side didn't agree with them. And um, so we, the man came out of the blue and wanted to buy our place because it was big. He could drive his semi-trailers around the three entrances and he asked us, would we sell? And so we said yes and we bought this place and we were just going to do it up and then buy another place. But then when my husband got sick, we decided we'd stay here a lot longer. So you've been here for 54 years, have I got that right? Oh, 53 or 54, oh, yes. I'm prone to exaggeration. I'm sorry, Daisy. Oh, yes, that's all right. yes. I'll just remind the listeners that they're on 102.7 FM and we're talking to Daisy McPaul, who's my guest today on Big Little Small Talk, and she's celebrated her 100th birthday in February. I'll have you know, Daisy, my youngest son, I've got five sons, and my youngest son was born on the 1st of February. So oh. that's a very good omen. You share you share the same birthday. So all this time living in Toowoomba, you um, you've got the five kids. I hear that you we share another um, love, and that's you're a very big op shopper. Is that right? You love op shopping. Yes, and I used to work in the op shop. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which which one did you work in? The one down in Rutheran Street. And um, in your spare time, what did you like to do? I hear you're a bit of a, a shark with the cards. You like to play cards? Oh, yes. But I used to do the crocheting and I used to crochet for the RSL and that and they used to raise money with it. Mm-hmm. Yes. What sort of things did you crochet? Did you crochet this purple poppy that I'm wearing today? Things like that or? No, mainly... Blankets, rugs, yes. Mm-hmm. 
And what about baby's clothes? I heard that you used to have oh, a, um, yes. a sideline where you'd crochet the baby's clothes and sell them at Bailey's. Was that correct? Yes, I used to do crochet our knit baby's clothes and Bailey's used to buy them. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And that gave you a little bit of your own money that you could spend? Well, that helped because Eric was sick mm-hmm. and uh, raising five kids and that it was hard. So every little bit helped. Exactly, yes. So during this time or around this time, that was when you joined the RSL, is that right? Tell me about the friendships that you formed with the women at the RSL. Oh, yes. We used to go um, to the to the hoy parties and that until I got too deaf to hear and either one of my daughters or my other daughter came in and we used to go there and we used to have an enjoyable time. Mm-hmm. What about Tilly? Was Tilly one of your really good friends? Yes. Tell me about Tilly. Oh, well, there's nothing much to say, but she was a good friend and I'm the only last one. All the rest of my army girlfriends have gone before me. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's the sad part about living for a really long time, isn't it? That you it outlive is, all yes. your friends. We yeah. used to meet at the Shamrock uh-huh. every month and have lunch. Wonderful, that... wonderful friendships. Yes. Yeah. So um, we're getting to the end of our interview. Thank you, Daisy, for letting me come and talk to you today. It's been a fascinating story. But sometimes I ask at the end of my interviews some questions. And so one of the first questions I wanted to ask you, Daisy, was what's the worst advice you've ever been given? Uh, I don't know. I've never been given bad advice. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if that's the case, what's the best advice you've ever given someone? What would be the best advice you've ever given someone? Willful waste, woeful want. Can you explain that to me? What does it mean? Well, if you waste a lot of things, you'll want a lot of things. Love it. Very. You're before your time. You're really into the recycling and um and being frugal. Yes, that's excellent. I love it. Now, um, have you ever stalked someone on social media? That. That's a joke, Daisy. I'm, I'm, I'm being silly. I don't think you would have stalked someone on, on social media, would you? No? Do you know what social media is? Oh, when they broadcast it all over. It is. It's, that's right. It's just being, being social like that. Okay, now if you could ask for a miracle, what would you ask for, a miracle? To cure all the sick people and... Uh... Not so much waste in the world. Peace. Let everybody live a peaceful life. Yes. Very prophetic. I like it. I like it a lot. Now, we talked before about how you loved school and you were a big reader. What's the book that's had the most influence on you, Daisy? The Bible. Well... That's very emphatic. You're, um, it's the Bible, one hundred percent. Good. What is the most memorable lesson you learnt from your parents? Well, my mother used to always say, "Don't waste, then you won't want." Mm. So that was where you got that saying from. It was yes. good. Yeah. Tell me what well, the saying was again. Willful waste, woeful want. Mm, I like it. But times were hard and when we didn't have enough to eat, we used to go down the range, take a billy can and pick blackberries and if we happened to see a pumpkin that was growing out of a paddock onto the roadway, we used to grab it (laughs) Mm. and one of the boys used to have a billy cart and he'd put it in there. And when times got really, really bad and that, 
we used to sell a lot of the pumpkins to the people up the range because they had more money than than the other people. Mm. And the spa used to, nothing was fenced off years ago and we used to swim out into the spa down at Hallidon and the bubbles used to come up and we'd swim out there and have a drink of the bubbly water then swim back again. <laughs> it's a different era, isn't it? And you, you know, you you wouldn't ever forget that feeling of being hungry or being cold, all of those sorts of things. But on to happier topics. Are you a singer and or a dancer, Daisy? Do you like to sing and do you like to dance? Uh, well, I ain't going to sing for nuts, but I used to love dancing. Yes. Mm-hmm. And um, what what's a song that can't keep you off the dance floor? If you heard this song, you jump up straight away. What one is it? Always. Mhm. That song. Yes. Okay. Now you said before that you everyone wanted to join up to the army and be a driver, like Princess Elizabeth or Queen Elizabeth. She, was she Queen Elizabeth by then? No, she wasn't. That was before she became the queen. But I always ask all of my guests on Big Little Small Talk, who's their favourite royal? Who's your favourite royal, Daisy? Well, I'm not really into royalty, but I'll maybe Queen Elizabeth II. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. So you would have seen all of her coronation and now celebrating her 70th jubilee. You've lived through all of it, haven't you? Yes. Well, that is totally incredible. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Daisy, I'm going to say thank you so much for being my guest on Big Little Small Talk. I've loved talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for this week. Thanks for joining me on Big Little Small Talk. I hope you can make the time to join me next week. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on your favourite podcast app.